you go through many processes. You, you first, you grieve for the loss of the, for lack of a better word, the personality, the person that you knew, the, the person you talked with, you laughed with, you did things with. They no longer enjoy the things they used to do, so you grieve that and you learn to, to live with that and accept that. It was very hard for me to put her in the home. I really thought that through and I had my moments and cried a lot. <laughs> I became comfortable, I wouldn't say happy, but I became comfortable with her being there. Um, and, but there's no real joy in that. You never stop taking care of an Alzheimer's patient. Um, because they are so vulnerable, they're so defenseless, that even though they're not physically with you anymore, um, you still need to be alert to how other people are treating her, what she looks like, um, how, how she is, and that just never leaves you. You become, you're not physically taking care of the person anymore, but you're an advocate. You are working with the staff, at least for me, it was talking with the staff. It was um, just going there at different times of the day, making sure that I saw every aspect of her life uh, in the facility. Um, the, and, and then it's the realization that they cannot take care of the person as well as you can because they don't have the time. These places are understaffed. The hospice called me at 1 a.m. and when the phone rang, I knew that um, that this was a call that mom had passed away, and I cried because although you've lost the person, personality, there, there, there's that person you knew as far as talking and being and doing with. Now you have to deal with losing the body of that person. It's it's still very, very hard to say goodbye to someone you love, even though that person had Alzheimer's and was no longer the person you knew. It was still your mother.